This might have been one of the biggest upsets in NBA playoff history. It was the 2007 Western Conference quarterfinal, the top-seeded Dallas Mavericks against the eighth-seeded Golden State Warriors. It takes only two words to conjure up memories of this iconic playoff series. We believe. The Warriors were just that, a hard-nosed band of players led by Baron Davis, Jason Richardson, Monta Ellis, Matt Barnes, Andres Fiedrins, and two crucial pieces who came over in a mid-season trade, Steven Jackson and Al Harrington. They were coached by Don Nelson, the godfather of run-and-gun, pace-and-space, positionless basketball. On March 4th, the Warriors were 26-35, with four teams standing between them and a postseason spot. Instead of sealing their fate as a lottery team for the 13th straight season, things suddenly started to click. Four and three for the ball game. Well, do you believe in the Warriors now? Davis returned from knee surgery a night later, and the Warriors rattled off 16 wins in their last 21 games, including nine of their last 10. They won their last five games by an average margin of 21 points, and nabbed the eight seed on the last day of the season. Their reward? A date with Dallas, the reigning Western Conference champs, who come back with a vengeance after blowing a 2-0 lead against the Heat in the controversial finals a year earlier. On the drive, inside, banks it in. These Mavs were one of the best regular season teams of all time. They produced 67 wins, three double-digit winning streaks, and a stretch in which they won 61 of 68 games. They had the league's second-ranked offense and fifth-ranked defense, and Dirk Nowitzki was about to be crowned league MVP. Still, even as a barely above 500 team, the Warriors had reason to believe. They were entering the postseason on a roll, a dangerous team playing with house money. They'd also swept the three-game regular season series, Golden State, in fact, was the only team Dallas hadn't beaten that year. How did he get that ball through there? And that's Nowitzki's third foul. It helped that Nelson knew the Mavericks inside and out. He coached them for eight years, including the first seven of Nowitzki's career. While his former team didn't have many weaknesses, he understood the ones they did. The Mavs were a methodical half-court team, skilled and smart, but not particularly athletic. The Warriors were the complete opposite. They lived for the open floor and played at the league's fastest pace. They bombed more three-pointers than any other team, and they often played small, going long stretches with the six-foot-nine Harrington or the six-foot-seven Barnes at center. The Warriors were a bad stylistic matchup for the Mavs. Throughout the series, the Mavs looked dazed, unable to deal with the speed and physicality of their opponents. They had no answer for Davis, who abused Jason Terry at the point of attack, hurled himself into the paint, and hit every jumper in sight. Davis averaged 25 points and 5.7 assists, shooting 54% from the field and 45% from three for the series. Steven Jackson shot 19 for 40 from deep, including 7 for 8 in the series clinching Game 6 win, when Davis was nursing a sore hamstring and told Jackson to take over. The Warriors outscored the Mavs by 60 points from beyond the arc across those six games. Nowitzki spent the series stuck in mud. MVP Dirk showed up only for a moment. On the brink of elimination in Game 5, trailing by 9 late in the fourth quarter, he scored 12 points in the last three minutes to extend the series. But in Game 6, he was flat-out terrible, shooting 2 of 13 from the field and 0 of 6 from deep as his team's epic season went up in smoke. The greatest upset in the history of the NBA playoffs. They have defeated the Dallas Mavericks in 6. The Warriors' magic finally ran out against Utah in the second round. That five-game series was largely forgettable, but it did produce one more raucous home win capped off by what became the signature moment of the We Believe run. Scoring, 
At the time, Golden State was maybe the most destitute franchise in the NBA. But that run created an atmosphere of sheer euphoria, galvanizing a long-suffering Warriors fan base and re-establishing it as one of the most passionate in the league. But it was more than that. Something about that specific team, that island of misfit toys, resonated with the city it represented. As the franchise morphed from doormat to dynasty, the iconography of the We Believe Warriors burned as bright as ever. Even after the run of five straight finals trips, the three titles, the 73-win season, the 16-1 playoff run, the death lineup, Steph, KD, Clay, Draymond, even after all that, a lot of fans cite We Believe as their favorite iteration of the Warriors. And they'll tell you that Oracle has never been louder than it was in the spring of 2007. Thanks for watching. If you like this video and want to see more content like this, be sure to hit that subscribe button.